in the summer of 71, <laughs> I was actually working in the boat plant. There was this buzz going on in the boat plant that, you know, something, something big uh, had happened or was happening. And uh, I got to be right in the, right in the beginning, in the middle of that. So what we didn't know then that, that we know now is that Ray Scott was having the very first Bassmasters Classic. And we had to make 24 boats uh, identical. And we had a very short period of time to do it. Retro bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about bill dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray-Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40-year-old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Bass boat making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassing. Tournament fishing in the early days was not what you see today. Um, none of the boats in those early days could do 70 miles an hour. <laughs> and, uh, most of the tournaments in the early days, you know, were, were the locals, the local guys. And they knew all, you know, all the, the streams, all the lakes, all the rivers, all the ponds. And th that would show up at the tournaments. And when the contestants and the crowd and the people there, you know, found out who he was, he would just literally talk for hours with just, you know, a crowd of people wanted to know, you know, hey, you know, how, how'd you do this? How'd you do that? And then, of course, it was, it was reciprocal. He loved to hear, you know, how these guys were catching fish, the techniques they used, you know, what they thought of uh, under, you know, what, what they were after under different conditions and stuff. So, so it was a transfer, transference, you know, of knowledge, you know, in both directions. And it was, it was fascinating because th those people were just really, really good people. And, and it was, you know, fun being there and watching. And, uh, I, you know, I, I don't think there was a whole lot of prize money back then. They were just doing it for pride, you know, more than anything else. But uh, that was that was a lot of fun watching, you know, watching a, a, a crowd gather and wanting to know, you know, just you know, that, you know, this is the guy that made, you know, this lure, you know, what? How in the world did you think of that? <laughs> you know, one of those kind of moments. He got into designing boats, and. I got to see that up close and original because of all the time that I spent in boats with him in the early days, and, and I'm talking the early days, we would literally just rent an aluminum boat from the marina, you know, and we would just go out, you know, with a tiller motor and, and you know, that's, that's, you know, how we went out on the lake. And then, of course, you know, later on, he would have a bass boat. I witnessed several conversations of him thinking about how he would design a boat if if you know he could do do his own boat and so he did and so he he designed the rebel i think uh, some people called them fast tracks but it was it was basically a rebel bass boat uh, it was pretty unique and that it had a uh, inboard outboard. It wasn't an, it wasn't an outboard. Uh, so that that kind of had its own benefits to it. And uh, that the the hatch that the motor was housed in was also a, a fishing platform. So you know you could you could set on top of that. Uh, it had uh, all kinds of uh, rod holders and rod space. 
uh, the cockpit of the boat uh, was made out of teak, which was, you know, kind of a nice little touch that you, you never saw on bass boats. But uh, it was a 90 horsepower Chevrolet, you know, straight six, and, and uh, it, would, it would do about 30 or 40 miles an hour. Which back then, you know, that was that was you know pretty pretty fast for a, for a bass boat. But I remember he he really liked to be able to get into uh, small tight places. So that's why the beam on that on on that rebel boat was not you know really wide. It was a pretty slender boat. In the summer of '71, <laughs> I was actually working in the boat plant. Uh, and there was this, there was this big secret going around. Of course, at that, at that time, you know, there was probably, you know, several hundred employees just in plastics research and the boat plant was across the street and there was probably 50 or 60 people in the, in the boat plant. And, uh, you know, we, we made boats, you know, we had the boat molds and we'd shoot the fiberglass and then we'd shoot the gel coat and then we would put them together and, uh, you know, we would, uh, put the rub rail on the two, the, the deck and the hull to put it together. And then we would, you know, cut out uh, the locker storage and put in the stringers and, and, you know, mount the motors and run the controls and do all the electrics on it. And uh, there, was, there was this buzz going on in the boat plant that, you know, something, something big uh, had happened or was happening and uh, I got to be right in the right in the beginning, in the middle of that. So what we didn't know then that we don't know that we know now is that Ray Scott was having the very first Bassmasters Classic. I think there were 24 entrants, and it was at a secret location. And, and it was r really kind of neat the way that he, he structured it. Nobody knew where they were going. So, you know, everybody was at a, at a level playing field. Uh, now, I'm not sure if they could carry their own tackle boxes. Uh, I'm not sure on the details of that. But I do know everything uh, about the knowledge of the lake was a secret. Uh, so, so, you know, they tried to level it out as much as they could, could. Well, they did the same thing with the boats. They wanted 24 identical bass boats. And something occurred with, I think, the, the original supplier for those boats. Uh, I, I have heard and have read stories that, uh, the Ranger boat plant, I think, um, caught fire or something happened with the Ranger boat that they weren't able to produce the boats for that tournament. So they, they, came, they came to Plastics Research, they came to Dad. And we had to make 24 boats uh, identical and we had a very short period of time to do it. At the time that I f was first in the boat plant, before the Bassmasters came along, I think we were producing probably four or five boats a week, maybe. And when the Bassmasters hit, uh, we had to do 24 boats, I think, within like a couple of weeks. It was just, it was pretty crazy. It was real crazy. And of course, uh, none of us knew anything about it. Typically, when you make a boat and you finish it and it's ready for delivery, uh, you put it on a trailer, you, you take it out on a trolley, and then you, you, you winch it onto a trailer, and then uh, the owner or the, or the marina or the boat dealer, you know, drives off with it in his car. <laughs> well, these boats were not delivered on trailers. They were, they were put on a car transport, because uh, uh, even with a boat transport, port, you know, the boat is still on a trailer, but these, these boats were not on trailers. It was just a pretty weird sight to see that they were, you know, stacking all these boats up, you know, with no trailers, you know, on these car transport ports. And, of course, nobody knew where they were going uh, or, or, or even, you know, why they were going. 
And of course, as everyone knows now, you know, it was Lake Mead and uh, the boats uh, from all of the stories and everything that I could tell that was written about it, uh, the boats performed flawlessly. I think there were two observation boats. I think Ray Scott was in one boat, and then I think a camera crew was in one boat, and then all the other boats were allocated to, uh, to each fisherman. I do remember there was kind of a delivery issue where one of the transports arrived later than the other. And the practice round, uh, they only had 12 boats, so they put two, two uh, contestants per boat in, in the, uh, I guess there was a, a pre-tournament round. But then by the time the tournament started, you know, the other, the other, you know, 12 boats showed up. So each contestant, you know, had their own boat. And I did discover last year, as a matter of fact, that there is a survivor there's a man in South Carolina that has, uh, I think it's the number 17 boat, uh, and he's restored it. And I think that's the only survivor out of that, uh, out of that whole entire <laughs> deal with the uh, first Bassmaster Classic. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassmaster.